what you see behind me is our weather stem weather station. It is a weather station that is equipped with a various amount of science, to, science tools to measure the weather here on campus. It takes the local temperature, it, uh, there's a rain gauge to monitor rainfall, a hygrometer for humidity, basically all of the same tools a real meteorologist at any weather station or on any college campus would have, but we have it local right here on our own campus for the kids to be able to track weather changes. And this is live data that was just pulled down from this particular station, actually up to the minute because we just pulled down the last 24 hours worth of data. Dr. N.H. Jones is a STEM school. We focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. And meteorology, weather in general, is just the perfect match for STEM. Uh, there's math that's integrated, our science skills, uh, opportunities for students to build solutions to engineering problems, as well as use the technology of the system itself. It communicates wirelessly with a black box in my room, and it updates a website that also has a social media, uh, text, mess text messaging features, and all of the above, so the kids really kind of get fully immersed in studying meteorology, learning about the changes. There's learning resources for the teachers to use and that even parents and kids can access at home. There's a, a lot of um, additional components. Here at the school we have a morning show program that we're going to be training students on kind of how to become junior meteorologists, uh, where they'll be able to do their own weather show. There's also a coding component where students will be able to utilize the weather station and the platform in order to build weather widgets that we can use on our um, school website and get more information out to the students and community so it really ties into all the facets of our magnet program. Several counties around the state have utilized, um, partnered up with the emergency management departments in the state so um, after speaking with Mr. Mansouri about possible funding opportunities for our system I reached out to uh, the Marion County Sheriff's Department, their Office of Emergency Management management and showed them what weather stem could do and how it would actually benefit the community community with alerts monitoring rainfall um, educating the students about various types of weather emergencies and they fell in love with it and partnered with us in order to bring it to our campus The system and program platform um, cost approximately $3,000 and through their grant system, they actually fully funded our station and our program for our campus. For the first time, the FHSAA has put high school baseball players on a pitch count. The new rules mandate the maximum number of pitches a player can throw in a game, as well as the required rest between appearances based on age and number of pitches thrown. In his third stint as head coach at Lake Weir, Craig Markham doesn't think local coaches will even notice the new rule. Uh, not at all, and, and like I, I, I don't think any of the coaches in Marion County, they've been doing a good job at that for years, you know, keeping an eye on their kids, not overusing kids on the mound. So I really don't think that's going to have a bearing on anybody in our county. I know there's some areas in the state and the nation that might, you know, that, that might be a factor, but uh, again, our guys in our county do a pretty good job. They've been around a long time, and we've never overused kids. While each inning is different, at least based on averages, every couple of innings pitched will require a day of rest. That isn't a big deal since games are usually spaced out every two or three days, but Lake Weir has five more sets of back-to-back -back games this season. To counter that, the Canes make sure they distribute the workload. Yeah, we're, we've worked as many as we can on JVM varsity, and we're just going to continue to bullpen guys, so we have six or eight you know, pitchers on each team. The biggest challenge may come late in the season when the stakes climb and the time off drops and there could be a tendency to lean on one arm. I've seen that a little bit late in the season when, when the kids had several starts and then you use them a little bit maybe towards the end as a closer maybe in districts so he pitched on Tuesday and you close with them on a Friday type of deal but again I, I really I really don't think it's going to affect us here in Marion County. Exclusive is a very unique event where uh, we get all the lights to be turned off, every single line, every net, everything that's white gets turned into a neon color. And the most amazing part about it is that every age level or ability level gets to participate on the same court while just watching a single neon ball coming across. That's what makes it so amazing. It's loud music, everybody's having a fantastic time. It's a massive tennis party and like I said, you don't know who's across from the net. All you see is this tennis ball which makes it remarkably awesome. We were the first um, 
uh, uh, facility to host it and it was absolutely amazing. We had a fabulous turnout and the response was incredible because we had so many members and non-members requesting for this event to happen again and we're fortunate enough to partner up with Take Stock in Children and, and be able to host this event on March 24th. It's a cool thing for families as well as individuals across all ability levels to be able to participate. You get to play with the pros, with your partners, with your friends, with your kids, so it's an awesome time. Our career and technical education programs give students a hands-on learning opportunity to apply the skills that they learn in all of their classes. A CTE student is also afforded the opportunity to job shadow. Our Pathways to Prosperity students get a full day to shadow someone in the field in which they're interested in. This gives them a real-world exposure to a day in the life of, and hopefully gives them a better educated decision on what they want to do for their future plans. Alexis Williams spent a day with Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. We are the third largest equine hospital in the United States, largest in the southeastern United States. Alexis today was able to see hands-on what vet techs and vets do uh, on the surgery day. So Alexis was able to see castration and she was able to really see the vet techs prepping for surgery, um, communicating with vets during surgery, and the entire process from the beginning to the end. So I came to Peterson and Smith today so I can get an idea of what I want to kind of figure out to do um, as a career in my own life. Getting to see everybody around here was nice. It was um, a great experience, of course. Glad I got to meet all the people that I did, and hopefully around January I'll come back out for the foaling season and help out. Shadowing program is a great way and opportunity for students to be able to delve into a day in the life of whatever possible career choice they're looking at. The Marion County Interscholastic Athletic Conference has existed for a number of years, but for the first time this year, it's really got some teeth. This year, uh, just as part of the growth process, we started uh, the conference almost, uh, we're in our eighth year now of, of development and certainly trying every year to get better. And last year, uh, it was put into place that we would uh, not only have MCIAC events for some of your individual sports, such as maybe weightlifting, track and field, uh, cross country, things of that nature, to where we expanded the tournament type format into team sports. It has been a, a really neat environment and something different that we've never we've never had in, in Marion County Public Schools. and. Uh, so far, it's been an enjoyable process. The next championship event is this Friday as the seven member schools will meet at Forest High for the track and field championships. Join the 8th Street Elementary family this Saturday, March 25th at 8 a.m. for their annual tradition trot. So the 5K will start promptly at 8 a.m. So everyone can still register. You can come that day and register if you would like to do so. Um, that will start at 8. Our one mile fun run will start around 9 a.m. Um, and between that time we're also going to have some Zumba. So we're going to have the zone is bringing over a Zumba instructor so we'll get the kids sort of moving um, because we want it to be an active day for them. And then we're also going to have a, um, a inflatable obstacle course that our coaches will sort of be manning and you can buy a bracelet that will get you unlimited times in the obstacle uh, inflatable obstacle course for five dollars and then the kids can just run through and play as much as they want. Um, we'll have some refreshments afterwards as well um, and we'll just hang out and have a good time. 